Thank you, Honorable Jean Sendeza. My name is Esther Mbewe. We are all here for the press briefing. We children gathered in Ilongwe for various districts in Malawi acknowledge many issues affecting the full enjoyment of our lives, regardless where we are, religious, ethical, and cultural black background. Among the many issues affecting us, children, we have isolated three issues. Thin plastics, child protection, and charcoal as issues that need the government attention now. Thin plastics. Malawi is a signatory to various United Convention and Treaties. This demonstrates the country's commitment to addressing global level and local issues. The United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child took a significant step to hold governments accountable for ensuring that children live in a clean, green, healthy and sustainable world by developing the general comment on children's rights and the environment with a special focus on climate change. General comment number 26. United Nations guidance on how children's rights are impacted by the environmental crisis and what governments must do to uphold these rights. We, children, are aware that in 2015, Malawi passed an act of parliament to enable the government ban plastics in phases. We children noted that the 2015 regulation was developed to safeguard the right to clean and healthy environment as enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic of Malawi, in the Environmental Management Act, and in the General Comment Number 26. We as children gathered at Luana here in acknowledge the government's efforts to ban thin plastics in the country. We, children, note that the 15 plastic manufacturing companies currently in operation in Malawi produce an estimated 75,000 tons of plastic per year, of which some 80% is reportedly single-use plastic. We, children, also understand that companies producing and selling the targeted thin plastics have been holding the government to operationalize the ban of producing and selling and use of the thin plastics. We, children, call upon government to expedite the process of filing the, its position to challenge the injunction. We further call upon the judiciary as an independent arm of the government to demonstrate their understanding on the impact and environmental hazards thin plastics are causing to the environment, to us children, and the generations to come. We children want to caution the esteemed judges of the Supreme Court that the manner in which the ban on thin plastics has been relentlessly blocked by repetitive injunctions has convinced us children that the goal of these plastics companies and the entire plastic industry is to use the courts as a shield for continued pollution of the environment. This is against the Constitution of the Republic of Malawi, Environmental Management Act, and UNCRC General Comment 26. There, we would like to reaffirm and reiterate that if these companies continue to manufacture, distribute, import, sell, use of plastics of less than 60 micron, children like to live in a clean, healthy environment is continuously violated. Thank you. My name is Bruce Inzimanja from Chidiba. I read the section of child protection. Every day, children f face violence, exploitation, abuse, and regrets. We deserve to feel safe at home, in schools, and in our communities. But this is not a reality. Some of the ch child protection issues faced by a Malawian child include see, First tray, child labor. There are many children forced to work under dangerous conditions. 
We need stronger laws and action to make sure children are not exploited and can go to school instead. Secondly, access to education. Millions of children are denied their right to education. We need to make sure every child, no matter where they live, can go to school and learn in a safe environment. Thirdly, violence and abuse. Children are often the victim, victims of violence and abuse. We need to provide protection and care for children who are suffering from harmful casual pregnancies and create laws that will make sure those orders are stopped. In conclusion, we children are gathered here agree that every child deserves to grow up in a safe, healthy world. That means we need to protect children and take care of our planet. We have voice, and it's time to listen to us because we are the future. Thank you. My name is Patrick Kalwale, a student here at Luano. I'm here to present um, on charcoal burning. I'll firstly start by citing from a, a government document from the Natural Resources Ministry, which is called the National Charcoal Strategy. I'll just highlight some of the things from the document that says, Based on the 2008 per capita consumption data, urban household demand for charcoal in 2016 is projected at more than 253,400 tons. If we include charcoal use by rural households and the hospitality industry, then total charcoal demand in 2016 exceeds 352,000 tons. Meeting this demand requires 2.35 million cubic meters of wet wood and could clear more than 25,000 hectares of woodland. If nothing is done to arrest the situation, the biomass energy strategist best studies that proje the projections of the charcoal demand could nearly double between 2008 and 2023 to reach about 606,000 tons. 606,000 tons per year. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a study that was done to project charcoal use from like 2008 to 2023, and this is 2024. We're looking at 606,000 tons per year. If 352,000 tons required 25,000 hectares of land, woodland, 600,000 tons requires as double. And these are trees that we're talking about. The current impacts of charcoal production on the environment. Due to the wanton cutting down of trees, deforestation has become a huge problem that has led to many other effects. For example, reduced air quality, long dry spells, and predictable rainfall pattern, among other things. And as we all know, all these children here present have the right to a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment. If we cut down trees for charcoal production, we know that we are reducing the air quality that these children breathe, providing an unhealthy and conducive environment that they live in. The other problem that we're going to look at is the loss of biodiversity in the ecosystem. Trees, as we all know, are a habitat for other living things in the world. As such, charcoal production has led to the mass destruction of forests hence causing an imbalance in the natural setup, leading to a loss of biodiversity affecting other industries that can and possibly bring in forex in Malawi, for example, tourism. Because once we cut down these trees, some of the animals are driven out, or even leading to extinction because they have nowhere to live, and they're disturbing the natural setup of photosynthesis and providing food to the rest of the other uh, parts of the diversity, affecting the food chains in the ecosystems. In the long run, as we have seen to say, if nothing is done to arrest the charcoal production problem, 
there's going to be things that are going to affect the future of these children here present. Just to cite a few, the decreasing in soil fertility and water retention for farmers. The increasing uh, food insecurity due to the erratic rains and long dry spells, they will indefinitely affect these children. And as we all know, children make up most of the, this nation's population. Subjecting these kids, subjecting these children to an environment, to a nation that will lead them to starvation. A violation of these kids' children' uh, freedoms and rights. We can also look at the increased incidence of floods due to increased water runoff. As highlighted, as highlighted by Dr. Komodo and um, uh, the, 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 the Minister of, of Natural Resources, we have seen to say, due to the cutting down of these trees, has led to climate change. And climate change has led to adverse, other negative and very harsh weather and climatic conditions that have put the lives of these children at risk. We have seen schools during the Cyclone Freddy being turned into uh, shelter homes. But in these shelter places, these relief camps that uh, are housing these children, are the rights and the freedoms of these children in those places being respected? No. We can also look at the, um, as a nation, we know that Malawi gets its electricity from hydropower. If we cut down a lot of these trees to produce charcoal, we are evidently providing a platform that our electricity production should go down. And as you all know, one of the three pillars of Malawi Vision 23 is industrialization. How can we have a country industrialized but does not have enough electricity to run these industries? It's impossible. Evidently affecting the future of these children. That cannot continue. Here, present ministers, we urge you that as you leave today, please carry the message that we want the government to fully and effectively and efficiently involve the law enforcement sector to curb the malpractice of illegal child production. Because it is a thing that is happening and we see it and we know it. Please involve the police the forest wardens or everybody else in the law enforcement to do something and curb this malpractice. We would also love for the government to have annual planting tree service, uh, annual planting tree activities to restore our deforested areas, to have back the natural, beautiful green Malawi that we once had. Thank you very much.